Hello everyone, this is Ash from Horrible Horror, putting my life on the line for your entertainment. Or not, I'm afraid I have some bad news. Um, it's about a month ago since I put up my first episode and I promised you a review of Devon's Ghost. Well, that review isn't here yet. Um, that's because I've hit some technical snags. Um, a while ago my computer crashed for about a week. Uh, I have that fixed, of course, since you can see me now. But since then, my computer has been doing a few weird, weird um, errors here and there. And the external that I use for space to, to work on is uh, not working for some random reason. I'm working on getting this, getting this fixed. I'm trying to find a, a way to, to repair this. But um, until then, you're kind of going to have to wait. I'm very sorry this annoys me a lot more than it annoys you. I really want to make this video and as soon as this is fixed, I promise it'll be made. Until then, I'm going to introduce you to a new aspect of the show. Basically, you could call it a mini horrible horror. Except it's not horrible, necessarily. This is where I may have watched a movie that I find very um, interesting, whether it's bad or good, and I want to tell you about it real quick. Just, uh, just for fun, for whatever reason I may come up with. And a couple of days ago, I went to the theater and watched Drag Me to Hell. Drag Me to Hell is directed by Sam Raimi, who most of you know of for the recent Spider-Man films. But to horror fans, Raimi was a legend long before there were any Spider-Man films in the movies. In the theaters, <laughs> sorry. Um, this is because he made a little series of films called the Evil Dead series. The first Evil Dead was a simple but very gruesome horror film, independent horror film, that Sam Raimi made along with some buddies, including the famed horror actor of recent years, that's not right, including actor Bruce Campbell, who many regard as a B-movie god, including me. The first Evil Dead was, um, like I said, independent and incredibly gory, incredibly gruesome, and it made an incredible lot of money. This movie was a great success. And a couple of years later, in 1987, Sam Raimi and Bruce Campbell, and pretty much all of the team, would return to make a sequel slash remake called Evil Dead 2. Strangely enough. Evil Dead 2 geared everything in a more comedic fashion. It um, was still scary at, at times and still had a lot of gore to pass, to go around with. But um, it was funnier. It was it was a movie where you would laugh your ass off one minute and then scream the next. And it was great. It was even better than the first in, in many eyes. And this is like one of the holy grails of horror films. A couple of more years passed, and in 1993 they would make a third film called Army of Darkness, which would take Bruce Campbell's Ash character to the past, to the Middle Ages. And it would also make the series almost entirely comical. There was really, really not much to be scared about in Army of Darkness. But Army of Darkness is the home of tons upon tons of fantastic lines that you have most likely heard whether you've watched the movie or not. Or not. Does the line, this is my boomstick, ring a bell or two? Since then, Raimi has made a number of other films. Uh, one that is noteworthy is The Dark Man, a uh, kind of dark, haha superhero movie, and some others that I honestly don't know too much about. And of course the Spider-Man movies, which I have already mentioned. <laughs> but for all that time, horror fans have just dreamt, hoped that he would one day return to the horror genre. And finally, it happened. He made Drag Me to Hell. Drag Me to Hell is the story about loan officer Christine Brown, played by Alison Lohman, who um, wants a promotion at her workplace. She is told that one of the qualities for getting that promotion is being able to make the tough decisions. And thus she decides to evict an old gypsy woman from her home. The gypsy woman is played terrifying by Lorna Raver. This does not make this old woman very happy, of course. In a fit of rage, she attacks Christine Brown and she curses her, puts on her the curse of the Lamia. Which basically means that for the next three days, Christine is going to be chased by a demon called the Lamia, until finally, it will quite literally drag her to hell. 
Drag Me to Hell is a lot like Evil Dead in the sense that it falls into what I like to call the Funhouse horror. No, not the movie Funhouse. Funhouse horror is really, um, how do I explain this? It's what I like to call it when the movie deploys a supernatural, very simple plot, like there's demons loose or something like that, to be able to pull off every scene they want and any effect they want for, yeah, for whatever reason. Other movies like this include, of course, the original Evil Dead movies, which most of you know, and a much less known movie called The Gate, which I can highly recommend. And boy, is Funhouse the right word to use. This movie is hysterical. One moment you'll be laughing out loud in fear, and the next you'll just be giving out a terrifying shriek of laughter. And no, I did not mess up the order. This movie just mixes comedy and horror in ways you have, well, unlike, unless you've seen the Evil Dead films, you've never seen anything quite like this. So the movie is funny, check, but is it scary? I would have to say not much. I mean, it does have a lot of great, great inventive scenes and some really horrifying situations and a lot of good shock effects. Trust me, you are gonna get caught by one of these. But you never really find yourself in danger. You're far too busy laughing, clapping, going oh, or stuff like that to, to really feel afraid. There's a big difference between jumping like this and actually being freaking fucking scared. And you're not gonna be the latter in this one. But it's really fun to watch in theaters. I was in there in um, a half-filled hall because honestly we don't really have the same horror movie culture here in tiny little Denmark which annoys me quite a lot. But it was a half-filled hall and everyone had a blast. People would go, oh, people would go, oh, people would go, hey, and people would laugh their asses off at all the right times. It was fucking amazing. I loved it. On the more technical side, I'll have to say this movie is very well acted. Allison really puts on an awesome performance. I mean, she doesn't really have to do much but, because, but walk around and looking scared, which most heroines do. <laughs> But she's actually very funny and she's a strong character. I liked her. Lorna Raver is great as the gypsy, even though she doesn't have that many scenes. She's just, she's everything you would stereotypically combine with an evil old gypsy woman and she just does it amazingly. She is creepy, she is freaking gross and she is hilarious. And um, one trademark, uh, Sam Raimi is well known for being able to use some very interesting camera techniques and he has not forgotten them. Holy crap. He knows just what buttons to push, just what angle to get something from. There's always a new interesting angle. I mean, in the Evil Dead series, he would often let us see through the eyes of this unseen evil force that torments Bruce Campbell and his friends. And here, well, it's not quite the same, but there's always a disoriented angle to it all, making, making us really feel that we're in a world where everything is out of control, where our rules just don't apply. It is a strong supernatural movie, it asks you to believe a lot, but if you just want to let go of reality and just have a blast, you're gonna have a blast. The script is just freaking hilarious. Not only is it unpredictable sense, a couple of scenes that are, yeah, that couldn't be avoided, but it's also, it's really, really funny. I mean, there's plenty of laugh out loud slapstick, like, like in the Evil Dead films again, but there's also a lot of tiny subtleties just just tiny bits in the character interaction that just make you laugh your head off. There's a couple of really funny side characters such as um, Christine's boyfriend's mother, a rich and very, very stuck up bitch. I wanted to punch her every single minute she was on screen, but she just made me laugh. So it's all good, really. Overall, if I were to give this a rating, I would have to say four. Like this, sorry, the cameras are a little wonky. Four out of five. Why not five? Well, like I said, it's not really that scary. It makes you jump, but yeah, I was kind of expecting to be more scared. That may be my own fault. Another thing I have is that this movie is full of Evil Dead references. Now, I love references for, to, to and from other movies and in-jokes between directors and stuff. But as much as there's a couple of fun references that you can go, Ha! I recognize that! There are also a couple of scenes that are practically remakes of what I've seen in Evil Dead. 
And if I want to watch Evil Dead 2, I put Evil Dead 2 in my DVD player and I sit down and I watch Evil Dead 2. Have I mentioned the Evil Dead series? So, in conclusion, go watch this in the theaters. Leave your brain outside because you're not gonna need it and just have a laugh. And I don't care if you see it coming or not. This movie has an ending that will stay in your head for quite a while after you leave the room. Well, that's all I have for now. Stay tuned for the Devon's Ghost review. I'm working on it as fast as I can. Stay scared. <laughs>